Welcome back everyone for the second preliminary winter weather outlook by Weather Watcher Studios. Just like my first preliminary winter outlook which I released in mid-July, we will be focusing on some weather anomalies that have an effect on our weather. Things like ENZO and PNA are all acronyms you've probably heard when watching weather videos, but what about this one, the QBO? Well, I'm glad you found this video because I'm going to break down all of these anomalies, including one of which you may have never heard of. Then I'll present my updated precipitation, temperature, severe weather, and snowfall potential forecasts before my overall preliminary forecast at the end. With that being said, let's start this video with a quick refresh on ENZO. This is a teleconnection that pretty much all long-range weather forecasts focus the most on due to its prevalence during the winter season. We are currently in an El Niño phase and it's in the process of becoming a strong one, which means that the ocean water around the equatorial Pacific is much warmer than it should be. The El Niño phase is actually something we haven't seen for quite a while since we've been stuck in a La Niña phase for the last few years. El Niño typically causes the polar jet stream to be displaced northward, allowing for warmer than normal air to build across Alaska down into western and central Canada and portions of the northern United States. This ridging also leads to drier conditions primarily around the Great Lakes and northwest. On the contrary, the subtropical jet stream becomes amplified, bringing an above normal amount of precipitation and even snowfall into the southern U.S. and northern Mexico. This could mean significant flooding in places like California and severe weather in Florida. The strength of El Niño is also significant. If an El Niño is weak, notice the variation in outcomes. This is because a weak El Niño has a smaller and less noticeable influence because other climatological factors tend to overpower it. But let's take a look at these average precipitation and temperature maps. I put together all strong to very strong El Niño winters and averaged them out, and this is what we come up with. When you have a strong El Niño in place, we see wetter than normal conditions along the entire west coast, parts of the southwest and into the south central and southeastern United States. We also see hints of wetter than normal weather up into Missouri and Kansas, and even into the mid-Atlantic. Drier than normal weather appears most probable across parts of the interior northwest over places like Idaho and Montana, as well as the Ohio and Tennessee valleys. In regards to temperature, it's actually pretty simple. Warmer than normal temperatures are likely along the entire northern United States, especially over the northern plains, while the entire southern U.S. is cooler than normal. Let's now move on to the PNA and its effects on the winter season. I also explained this teleconnection in my first preliminary winter forecast, but for those who don't know, the PNA stands for the Pacific North American Teleconnection, and it refers to specific pressure patterns. A positive PNA features lower pressure over the North Pacific, leading to ridging over the West. A negative PNA is the opposite, featuring higher pressure over the Pacific, therefore leading to lower pressure over the western U.S. El Niño is usually associated with a positive PNA, which reinforces that warmer than normal air across western North America. And now for the anomaly known as the QBO. This is probably not something you hear about often, but it actually has a bigger impact on the weather than you may expect. To understand this more fully, we need to travel up high into the atmosphere. The QBO stands for Quasi-Biennial Oscillation, and it's a regular variation in the winds high above the equator. Take a look at this wind map across Earth. These are winds way above our heads, roughly 18 and a half miles high. But notice the direction they're moving in. They're easterly. During an El Niño and easterly QBO phase, which is what we expect for the upcoming winter, we tend to see lower pressures being likely, especially from Mexico and the southwestern U.S., parts of the East Coast, and even Europe. Along with that, we also see a signal for a strong high-pressure system over the North Atlantic Ocean, known as the negative NAO phase, which stands for the North Atlantic Oscillation. This area of high pressure can serve as blocking, leading to interesting snowstorms for parts of the U.S., 
Studies have shown that an easterly QBO phase, an El Nino, and low sea ice extent all contribute to weaker polar circulation. When the polar circulation is weaker, this increases the risk of sudden stratospheric warming events. Sudden stratospheric warming events occur when there is a strong temperature and pressure increase that results in the collapse of the polar vortex displacing the cold air. This would send extreme cold into Europe, Asia, and North America. There's one more anomaly I want to talk about. It's called the NAO. I mentioned this one just a few moments ago, and it's called the North Atlantic Oscillation. It's the fluctuation in the difference of atmospheric pressure at sea level. This can affect the track that storms take in both Europe and North America. Like many of these weather teleconnections, the NAO has a positive and negative phase. The positive phase occurs when there's an abnormally low pressure in place, and the negative phase occurs when there's abnormally high pressure. For the upcoming winter season, it's looking likely that we will see a negative NAO. For December through February of 2023 to 2024, I'm expecting warmer than normal conditions across much of the northern United States and most of Canada. The chance of warmer temperatures is increased from the northwest into the Great Lakes and up into the central and western portion of Canada. Lastly, the greatest potential for warmer than normal temperatures is across portions of the interior northwest, northern plains, midwest, Great Lakes region, including western Canada and the Canadian prairies. Those areas is where I really expect to see warmth build up throughout the winter. This doesn't mean I don't expect periods of extreme cold, especially since the chance of a sudden stratospheric warming event is higher this winter. Cooler than normal air is more likely and expected to be more persistent across the southern United States, northern Mexico, and even parts of Cuba and the Bahamas. That brings us now into the precipitation forecast. Drier than normal conditions are expected across much of western and southern Canada into the northern United States. Two separate areas have a greater probability of drier conditions, and they include much of the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley region as well as the interior northwest. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, the potential for a variable storm track across the west coast has introduced some level of uncertainty about how dry the Pacific Northwest will be. For now, I have opted to include wetter than normal probabilities across the Pacific Northwest. Other areas expecting wetter weather include the southwest, south central, and southeastern United States as well as the east coast. The wettest conditions are currently favored across California and parts of the Gulf States and Carolinas. This next map is probably the one that a lot of people are interested in. I created a snowfall potential map compared to other winters to show you who has a greater risk of seeing snow or even above normal snowfall. Across the northern U.S., warmer and drier weather will cause snowfall to be less than average, primarily across the interior northwest and Great Lakes region. Areas in the light blue have an uptick in snowfall potential compared to other winters, with the greatest risk for above average snow from the Sierra Nevada mountains in California into the mountainous terrain of the southwest, as well as parts of the southern high plains. I really do think the southern and eastern U.S., especially around the I-95 corridor, will have a really good chance at seeing substantial snowfall events. But snow isn't the only risk winter storms bring. We also have to worry about severe weather, but who needs to be most aware? Here's my latest severe weather forecast for the winter season. I'm expecting much of the southern U.S. to have at least a chance of severe thunderstorm activity. A couple areas with a greater risk include California and the southern plains into the southeast. The greatest risk for severe weather and even tornado outbreaks is in the purple across Dixie Alley down into Florida. So to wrap up this video, I put all the information together into one map so you know what to expect across the country region by region. Starting off in the Pacific Northwest, expect generally a warmer winter with some rainfall. The variable jet stream may bring some storms into California, but some may make it into the Northwest. Across the Southwest, expect warm and very wet conditions in the lower elevations. This includes San Francisco and Los Angeles, California, Las Vegas, Nevada, and Phoenix, Arizona. This darker blue shade across the southwestern United States into the High Plains is where I expect more snow than usual. This will be due to unusually cold and wet conditions in place. 
The interior northwest can expect a warmer and drier winter from Montana down into northwest Colorado. The northern plains and upper midwest can expect a warm and dry winter, although I am watching the potential for a few significant Arctic invasions, maybe even a stratospheric warming event. The large pink area is the wild card zone. I usually include one of these in my long range forecast to show where I expect the greatest variability and uncertainty in the winter weather pattern. This is a region of the country which will likely be in between warmer than normal conditions in the north with cooler weather in the south. I expect generally warmer and drier weather, especially the further north you go, but don't let your guard down. There may be a few surprise snowstorms every now and then. Next up, we have a blue shade from Texas into the Carolinas. I kept this region generally unchanged since my first winter forecast, and this is where I expect a greater than normal risk for snowstorms. Severe weather, flash flooding, extreme rainfall, and even tornadoes will be possible along the Gulf Coast and especially over Florida. The last region extends across the Appalachian Mountains into the northeast. This is a region where I think has a high chance at seeing at least one major snowstorm since a lot of factors will fall into place making this a plausible scenario. Thank you all for watching my second preliminary winter forecast. If you enjoyed this update, please do consider subscribing. I upload forecasts to help you stay weather aware in both the short and long range. If you have any questions or comments, make sure to leave them down below. You can also help support this video by giving it a like or even sharing it with someone who may find it useful.